Hello, my crafty friends. Welcome. I'm going to be creating a few cards for you today in this video. But first, I wanted to show you some of the club kits that Spellbinders has sent me for July. Now, this is the one I'm going to be using in today's video. This is the stencil club kit. And for July, we're doing Christmas in July. This one's called Sprigs and Bow. All of the club kits are going to be Christmas themed. This stencil is such a simple crafty goodie, and you can get some really fun cards out of it. So you can create a bow, and then if you want, you can put some holly and berries behind it. But it's a layering stencil, and there are six stencils to this kit. Three of them are the bows, and then the other three are the holly and the berries. You get a lot of bang for your buck with the Stencil of the Month Club Kit, and it's just one of my favorites. Next up is the Better Press of the Month Club Kit. This one I'm super excited about, too. It's called Christmas Haul, and you get several press plates with it, and then even some dies to cut them out. This is your registration template because you're going to create this cute truck in layers. And then you have plates for the truck and then the tires and the Christmas tree that fits in the back of the truck. It also comes with two sentiment plates that says Merry Christmas and Delivering Cheer. It even has cute dies to cut out some snow to put on your truck and on the ground beneath the tires. This is such a clever, well thought out, better press club. Next is the Glimmer of the Month Club. It's called Joyful Holly. Let me show you these glimmer plates and you get a few die plates as well. So here's the cute holly image. Then it has a coordinating die to cut it out. And then you get two sentiments. Or actually one, but they fit together. I guess you could use them separate if you want. It says, wishing you joy. And then if you buy the kit and caboodle club, which is everything, you get an extra goodie, and it's this stencil. And you can use the stencil to color in the holly and the berries. The stencil makes it really nice if you want to create a quick card. You don't have to spend much time coloring in the leaves and the berries. With the, the glimmer plates, however, you don't even have to color in your images if you don't want to. Such a beautiful, elegant look. Next is the clear stamp and die of the month club. This one's called Christmas Magic Sentiments. And you get a lot of Christmas themed sentiments. I love the one that says no peeking. And then you get a coordinating die that cuts out all of the larger sentiments and then a rectangle die to cut out the strip sentiments. Like so. Then you can just trim them down to the size of your sentiment, of course. I'm going to be using a lot of those sentiments for my cards today. And last, I have the 3D embossing folder of the month. This is called Pine Cones and Berries. Now let's get into some stenciling. I'm going to use my little stencil mat to create my cards. And I'm starting out with a piece of sage green cardstock. I'll put the outline of the bow down first. And I'm going to tape this in place. And then I'm going to be using some Distress Oxide inks. Starting out with a light pink. And I go over it several times because I want it as dark as I can get it. I'm going to speed this up for the sake of time. But I'm just showing you the basic way to do it for card number one. And then when that's all stenciled in, I'll take off the first stencil. And the second stencil is a little more detailed. I like to wipe them off with my microfiber cloth. And here's stencil number two, and I'm going in with a darker pink ink. I believe this one is Festive Berries. And the lighter ink was Worn Lipstick. 
Again, I'm going over the stencil several times to get it nice and dark. And then here is the bow all ready to go. Isn't that beautiful? You could just leave it at that if you want. But of course, I have to try the other three stencils. Or I should say the other four because I taped down the bow stencil over my inked image. That will just protect it from the next stencil. And with this stencil, I'm creating the stems for the greenery. I jumped ahead here and I went for a smaller stencil brush just because the lines on the stencil were so narrow that the stencil brush really helped and I just move it in circular motions. And here's the next stencil that will color in the greenery or the leaves. Of course, you have to make sure that all of your stencils line up before you start inking them up. I think it would be very easy just to have it flipped the wrong way and ruin your card so far. And then here are the berries. And again, I'm using a small stencil brush to get into these teeny tiny nooks and crannies. This is kind of an orangey red ink. It's called Fired Brick. The brown ink that I used was, uh, let's see, Vintage Photo, and the green was Pine Needles. And these stencils are really well thought out too because you don't have to use the bow if you want. The holly and berry pattern continues on if you don't want to use the bow stencil. Here's a close-up look at card number one. I'll be putting these all together at the end. For card number two, I went ahead and did the exact same thing. But this time I'm going to use a stencil that's not necessarily Christmas themed. So this is a great stencil, at least the bow stencil, is a great stencil for all year round, just for birthday cards. And I'm going to add some green ink over this. This ink is called Rustic Wilderness. And I forget the name of this stencil, but if they still have it at the Spellbinder shop, I will list it in the description box. But I just loved the check pattern. And I thought the tone on tone was really pretty too, so that's why I continued with the Sage cardstock. I'll take off the bow stencil. And look how cute that one is. So pretty. For my third panel, I'm going to bring in some pattern paper. This is um, called Oh What Fun, and it's a Christmas pattern paper. And I'm just looking through the different designs to see what I can ink on top of. I want kind of a light pattern. I don't want anything too bold because it would be hard for the bow to show up. So I picked this piece of light blue paper with snowflakes on it. And I'm going to use some blue inks for this. So I'll use the first bow stencil and some tumbled glass ink. This is a really pale blue, so it doesn't show up very well. You can still kind of see it. Next, I'll use some broken china, which is a little bit of a darker blue. And the stencil, again, puts in the details of the bow. I like the Distress Oxide ink, and I've said this before, so sorry if I sound like a broken record. But the Distress Oxide inks sit on top of the paper, so they show up really well on patterns as well as colored cardstock. Now this is going to be card number four, and I'm going to create three panels for card number four. Here's the first one. The bow didn't turn out perfectly. It's a little bit dark. I used two very dark reds, but I'm going to keep on. The next piece is going to be pink. I'm using some pink sand cardstock and some pink ink. And for my third piece, I'm using another piece of pattern paper and some green inks on top of this. These patterns also come from the Oh What Fun pattern pack. I'm being very careful with the patterned paper because it is very lightweight and I don't want to rip it. So I'm going to cut all three of these patterns down with some rectangle dies. At first I wasn't going to cut down the striped pattern. 
but I'm going to use another rectangle die on this. I'm going to be arranging all three of these presents on the front of my card. I'm using some tape liner and I'm going to put down the striped piece first. I want to arrange them so that you can see all three of the bows, at least most of the bows. Next, I'll put down the pink Prezi. And I'm going to allow the corners of my white cardstock to show. The Spellbinders tape runner is really nice because you can rearrange the placement of your pieces if you don't like where you put it. And here is the third piece. This again is another piece of pattern paper. Then I'm going to flip this over, pull out my Spellbinders long sharp scissors. Mine are really old, so that's why they're green. If you were to buy these in the shop, they're gray now. And I'm just going to cut off the overhang. And I love the way this one is turning out. It's so fun. I'm going to match this with a piece of red cardstock. And there is a square taken out of this piece. That's all right. I only need the edges of this piece of cardstock to be seen. I should have pulled out my glue for this very narrow edge, but I'm just trying to make the tape runner work. I'll attach this to my top folding card base. I attached my main panel next, but I decided I wanted to add a little bit of ink to the corners. So I carefully peeled up this panel and I'm using some pink ink on one corner. More green on the next. I'm just kind of coordinating the colors of the bows. Here I'm using some red. And I'm covering up the white corners on this card. It looked cute as is, but it just needed a little something more, I thought. And then I can attach this back onto the card base. Now I'm going to show you all of the completed cards next. I used the clear stamp and die of the month for the sentiments, as I mentioned. Here is card number one. It says, Merry Christmas from our home to yours. And then card number two. This one says, Sending Christmas wishes. And I used a few die cuts behind the sending. For card number three, I found some cute snowflake dies cut out a few for my card and it says delivering snowflake kisses and then the last one is my favorite and I also created a coordinating envelope for it. I hope you enjoyed this close-up look at the stencil of the month for July and again it's called Sprigs and Bow. Thanks so much for spending some of your time with me today. I hope that you were inspired. I'll be back again soon with another card crafting video. Take care. Bye.